Let's give him something to cheer for now. Please refrain from shooting lasers onto the field. Thank you. Time now for the College Football Inquirer. Here's Pat, Russ, and Dan. All right, welcome to the pod. And uh, I want to start with one of our ongoing and most intriguing stories. Coach Prime, Boulder, Colorado. Spring game is Saturday. Folsom Field sold out over a month ago. Sold out. It's only 45000 because they're not using like some luxury boxes and some entertainment areas, but sold out. They probably could have gotten who knows what. Mm. Last year, they had 1,800 people at the game. Yeah. Previous high was in 1990. 1990 spring game. The year they won the championship, right? Yep. Was, they were they were a very good program then at that time. Well, a rocking 17,800 came out that day. Yep. So uh, Coach Prime, uh, the Coach Prime effect. They're really? going to be celebrities there, football s- legends, as you would imagine. ESPN is broadcasting live. I think Chris Fowler's doing the game. Uh, like they're, Colorado they're set, alum. Colorado alum. Like we're sending the A team here. Yeah. yeah. A ridiculous number of recruits. <laughs> uh, like 10 top 250 recruits there. Two top five recruits. Wow. wow. Colin, Colin Simmons and Williams Noir Neri, I believe is how you say his name, from... Uh, from uh, St. Louis, Lee Summit, Missouri. There's Lee Summit. Where is that? Is that in? Uh, yeah, that's Missouri. St. Louis, right? Uh, yeah, that's the Kansas City side. No, Kansas, Kansas City. City I'm sorry. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. I got it wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, third and fourth in the rankings. Two defensive ends. Mm. Mm. Two top five recruits at the Colorado Spring game. Wow. Um, absolute fanfare, excitement. Yeah. You know, I don't think you can throw it any bigger than this. I don't know. Pat, you are a Colorado, uh, uh, raised in Colorado. Can you believe yep. it? Born and raised in, no. I would never, ever in my mind could have imagined a sold-out Colorado spring game. I mean, I'm surprised when you said 17,000 in 1990. That's a lot. It's just, <laughs> it is not a place that's hardwired for football like Columbus, Ohio, and Tuscaloosa, and you know, so on and so on. And so to get a sellout for a spring game, and by the way, we'll see if everybody shows up. I just checked, because there is no real spring in terms of weather in Colorado. I mean, it is a total crapshoot. So it's a high of 41 and a low of 25 on Saturday. Oof. Oh, that's not helping yeah. them. Sunny, though, no. probably. Cloudy. According, Cloudy. according to the forecast, Ooh. and now the forecast will change three times before Saturday yeah. gets here. But still... Like that's the Dion effect is real and it's spectacular. I mean, it's I am blown away just by the amount of energy and enthusiasm from the fans, from recruits, and everything else. And all he's got to do is actually produce. Yeah, this is what uh, this is why you hire uh, Dion, or certainly one of the reasons why you hire Dion. And um, I know we talked about it on the show before, but uh, it's a it's a trend. You you see. Athletic directors in, in search firms and stuff zeroing in on guys not only anymore because of their football acumen and even their record, but it's about getting butts in seats. It's about making money. This is a business now, and they, uh, they're they finally starting to come around to acknowledge that the football and basketball part of it is a business in you need money to run a business, and old Dion uh, certainly brings that in. Full day of stuff, too. They got like a volleyball scrimmage. They got a soccer game against Nebraska, which I think is a women's soccer game. I don't know. That, that mm. Women's soccer is usually in the fall. Yeah, sure I think you is, can so. play. You can do like a spring scrimmage. They, they can do that in some of these fall. So they're sports. doing that also. I don't know if that's out on the – is that out on the field or is that somewhere uh-huh. else? That would be kind of cool because by the end yeah. of that soccer game, you'd have 30, 40, you know, almost everybody there. Yeah. Um just a big day. Uh, you know, my thing with, with Colorado, we've, it, it, uh, Ross, have you been to Boulder, Colorado? I have not. Okay. Well, Pat and I have been there, and you get there, 
And the, the reason, if you've never been there, it's it's fantastic. It's just a, one of the most beautiful towns in yeah. the country. Uh, the flat irons or uh, the mountains are r- like you could you're standing on Colorado. The reason seven, only 17,000 have ever gone is because it was a nice spring day and you're in <laughs> Boulder. You say, I'm going to go walk up that mountain. Yeah, yeah right. I'm not going to waste my time going to that. I don't care who's yeah. playing. Maybe the yeah. Broncos could have filled the place, but there's so much to do. Rocky Mountain National Park is like an hour away. An hour, hour, 15 minute drive up up the hill. But you, the, the, the mountains start right on the edge of campus. So it's one of these spectacular places. It's a beautiful downtown. And they have all these, you know, kind of wild, like zoning laws to keep this. The, they keep sprawl down. So yeah. There's like they yeah. like there's all this empty space outside of Boulder, so it's it's a unique city, but it's a, it's a beautiful place, and it's always been like you get there, and you go, gosh, what an incredible place to go to to live, right? Mm-hmm. And I think with football, it's always been like, boy, you know, if somebody got here and could get all these people out and look, and someone's gonna some some of these recruits are gonna get there and go, you know, it would be better if it was 65 and sunny, but that's usually is there. It really doesn't get that bad the weather's usually pretty nice um and just sat there and said why why not here right like why not here and i think that's always been the thing with colorado problem is you got to the top five recruits you got to fly in from texas and missouri they aren't coming they aren't driving 45 minutes over with their dad that's you know and that's the, the problem how do you get those recruits well here it is like this is the this is it this is the 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 best shot colorado's ever gonna have is right now with with Deion Sanders, sure is, yeah. No, it's this is uh, absolutely a strike while the iron is hot situation, and it is one of those places you just feel like get them on campus, you're going to win some battles. Um, I just looked it up; it has a really high out of state uh, enrollment, forty three percent, because that's if it works for regular students, it probably works for football and basketball players too. You get out there and you're like, oh my gosh, I want to go to school here. This is awesome. So. Uh, they've just needed some. They've needed a football program to sell. They've needed some fervor to sell, and I think they can put on a heck of a show here Saturday, and and it might uh, translate into some some quick recruiting gains. Yeah, pictures of uh, you're talking about Boulder, making me want to go to Boulder. But yeah, if I'm in Boulder and it's just this beautiful place, yeah, I want to go to the mountain or go skiing or something. But I, I've seen uh, just pictures of of Boulder, uh, and they they are uh, they are stunning. Um, so yeah. it, uh, one day, one day, maybe I can get out there, but yeah, I, you know, it's, um, it's funny that I don't, I can't remember a coaching hire where the, that has, uh, created, uh, more hype in, in off season number one than this one. Like I, I can't maybe go back to Nick, like Nick Saban at, yeah, at Alabama. Yeah, that that was like the only one, you know, I, the the closest one I can remember. Obviously, I think Nick Saban delivered probably on the hype. I guess you could say that maybe, <laughs> but will Dion deliver? Yeah, we'll. Um, well like, what's we'll, the, we'll for see. Colorado? The stakes were so low. Yeah, like yeah. what's delivering? Like honestly, yeah. the guy goes seven and five a couple times, and he's technically delivered. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think I, I think I think but that uh, he's not, not well, here to go seven and five. There's no I'm right. Not, I'm not lowering the bar. Right, but. right, right. I think I think being in contention at least by year two or three. But the rate at the rate he turned over the roster, some might say, hey, they should be in contention this year, especially in a new Pac-12. If the Pac-12, you know, remains together, um, but in a new Pac-12 without USC and UCLA, gosh, you would think that Colorado. Um, should be a contender for the league championship. Certainly, every other year, I would think that's the expectation level. Yeah, I think I think this is I think this is great. I think he, you know, we'll see. Uh, but the, just we'll see what they do next year. I mean, they're coming off a bad team. He still has like he's over rostered right now, um, and he mm. still wants to work the board. Also, he's still got some more some more guys to to run off because uh, yeah. he's bringing his Louis with him. Uh, his Louis Vuitton <laughs> luggage. It, it was funny. I was, you know, I was in uh, I- in uh, Italy. We we were shot going around the shopping district, and we went into Louis Vuitton to look around. Trust me. Mm. And I looked at the luggage. It was just it's just so r- random. And I was like, it was like nine grand for this bag. <laughs> like, 
<laughs> nine grand. <laughs> it wasn't even their best one. Like if I didn't. Nice, I, if you were a good dad, you would have bought that for your. Yeah, dad. sure. I was mm -hmm. like, oh, P Coach Prime, Coach Prime. I get it now. Like yeah. I figured, Louis, and as, and I, it was so expensive that I looked at the tag and I like let go of it, like it was a hot iron. Like <laughs> don't, just don't, don't break the luggage. Yeah. <laughs> it's like that's a nine thousand dollar bag. Holy moly! It wasn't like the that's it was not their best item either. So, really? Yeah. I've never shopped at a Louis store. I admit. Yeah, go check it out. <laughs> Probably don't have a ton of them in Kentucky. Do they have a Louis Vuitton <laughs> in Kentucky? <laughs> I have no idea. No, no go to no. Rome. Yeah, they got them in yeah. the big city. <laughs> oh, the Rome Louis Vuitton. Look at you. Yeah, that was some serious Louis Vuitton there. Coach Prime yeah. would have been proud, although I was not dropping nine G's on a little little handbag. No. I hope he takes him by this. I hope Coach Prime knows about this guy. Pat, have you ever seen this guy in Boulder? I was there a couple years ago. My uh, my my nephew Chris Wetzel is a firefighter out in that area, and we went and visited him. And uh, in Boulder, they have this. Uh, what's the big street there? Pearl Street, I think Pearl it's Street. called. Yep. yep. Okay. Pearl it's Street. like a big yep. outdoor shopping market. It's a it's an absolutely great city. Yeah. As Coach Prime said at the Super Bowl when I saw him, it was three weeks, and I didn't see a single police officer. <laughs> He didn't see the cops for three weeks. That's how nice the town is. They don't even have, they don't need cops. Uh, interesting perspective. So they have this outdoor thing, and you can shop, and the, it's like an outdoor mall, and there's restaurants. Everyone goes there. It's a big, popular place. And um, they have, like, you know, guys like, you're, you know, I'm juggling for money or whatever, the little street performers. Yeah. So right. they have this guy, and I just looked up his name. I did not know his name, but he's known as the zip code guy. What? People know. People will know what I'm talking about. Is uh, the zip code man? You can say the your zip code to him, whatever zip code you're in, and he will tell you what town it is. Wow, or you can really? say the town, and he'll tell you. Well, yeah, it's got to be the zip code to the town. That's right. Because some, okay. like if you just take New York City, well, you know, yeah. hell, there's a thousand zip codes or something. I don't know. He's memorized thirty five thousand zip codes. <laughs> and he just stands there. His name is David Ross Deichler, I guess, according to this. Okay. Uh, he just sits He's... there all day and makes money <laughs> throwing with people throwing zip codes at him. And it'll just be Boulder's uh, Rain Man, huh? Yeah. yeah. And people throw, I mean, and so we stood there, and I mean, people are there from all over, and they're like, you know, I'm from a small town in Montana. Like, how the hell did he get it? Or like, uh, you know, what? I, it's just all these. They're trying to trip him up, and they couldn't. So I hope he brings them to the zip code man. <laughs> yeah, you should bring I every recruit to buy. Yeah, he'll know. What a skill. Yeah, yeah. I'm impressed. I mean, think I about this: what. if you had that talent, and you're just like, that's my living. Like, I just, I, I memorized thirty five thousand zip codes. <laughs> And now on good days, I go out, sit on Pearl Street for like five hours, <laughs> rack in two bucks a shot, <laughs> report like half of it <laughs> at best. And uh, that's your living. Go down to the dispensary after that and enjoy your night. That's. Uh, and I was going to say that uh, <laughs> the reason Dion didn't see any cops for three weeks is because they've legalized marijuana. So they don't have anything. They don't have that much to do. There's not, not a heck of a lot, lot else going on in Pearl Street other than that. <laughs> <laughs> it's chill. It's very chill. Yeah. As my nephew, my nephew's firefighter, you know, first responder, right? So you see it all. Mm -hmm. He said, mm -hmm. uh, pre-legalized weed and post. He's like, you'll always take the high guy over the drunk guy when you're showing up. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. Yeah. He's like, yeah. not even close. He, yeah. <laughs> it's like, does, did you notice anything different? He's like, yeah, it's been much better. <laughs> it's like apartment could be half on fire and the dude's just sitting there. <laughs> yeah. But at least they're not yelling at you or smashing Trying things. To fight like, you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's like, what's up, man? Uh, looks like the <laughs> kitchen's on fire. All right. We'll take care of that. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. You guys got any snacks? <laughs> <laughs> I thought I called pizza. I called the 911. Uh, uh, Anyway, big game for Coach Prime. Uh, I'm excited for the the, the Colorado fans, for sure, uh, who finally have something uh, something to go with here. All right, um, 
it is uh, Wednesday, the the nineteenth, and South Carolina picked up verbal commitments from two players from Springdale, uh, Maryland: Brand- Braden Lee, defensive back, and Mike Williams, a uh, offensive alignment, uh, giving them uh, ten commits now. They're in. Uh, they ranked seventh overall in uh, rivals, a uh, fifth by twenty four seven, and they. If you look at the top ten of the rankings, y- you know usually remember some, like Texas Tech was like number one, and like sometimes someone will jump the gun and get way out yeah, ahead. Right. Not really the case this year. Ohio State's one. Georgia, Michigan, LSU, South Carolina, Florida State, Penn State, Notre Dame, Tennessee, Florida, right? Oregon, pretty pretty normal. Uh, except for South Carolina, of course. So mm. they have uh, 10 commits. They're ranked fifth. Eight of them are four stars. Uh, they have five of the top seven. The top three players in, in the state of South Carolina are committed to South Carolina, not mm. Clemson. Mm. Five of the top seven are committed to South Carolina, not Clemson. Now, Clemson, mm. uh, Clemson's recruiting will be interesting. I'm not certainly going to rule them out. They are still involved with seven top hundred players nationally. They are certainly a national program at this point. I I, I expect Coach William Christopher Sweeney to uh, to to hold it together uh, and do pretty well. Um, and again, it's early. I said like Alabama was not on that list. I looked. Alabama is in the running for eighteen top hundred players still. Yeah, yeah they already have, they'll get they already there. Have five. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, they already have like two fives. They'll be fine. But. Um, Three from the t- three top three in state. Five five of their recruits are top two hundred and fifty players. Shane Beamer's program is making noise. Now it's a it's a it is an uphill climb in the SEC, and it and it only gets steeper at the top. But considering they beat Clemson, Tennessee to end their season last year, had a pretty good showing in the bowl game against Notre Dame. Incredible momentum continues for the Cock Commanders, right, Ross? Yeah, indeed, man. It's uh, we talked about Shane Bimber a lot this fall in in the stretch they went on uh, late last season. How impressive it was, and uh, how it kind of I think blew away people. People even really close to the program did not expect them to do what they did. In boy, has that carried over to the um, to the recruiting uh, class? Uh, that's. Uh, that's amazing, and you, and you do wonder, um, you know, is on the field they they took down Clemson and broke that skid, and you know, you we all we hear a lot about how rivalry games can, you know, sway recruits and impact recruiting. Um, sometimes you don't really see that the ta- that tangibly, but man, we're maybe we're seeing it now. It's it's a uh, incredibly impressive. But anybody who probably been around Shane Beamer, uh, you know, you, you, you probably could see why he's a, a good recruiter, right? He, he's a really affable and outgoing and, um, you know, you, 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 he very quickly warms up to you people person and, uh, man, they've, yeah, they've got it going on. Yeah. And you know what? He, he doesn't mind really like having fun and putting on a show with the recruits either. Yeah, I mean, some of the videos and stuff, I mean, you know, he's he is bringing that sort of relatable energy to young people. I think it's really helping. And it's interesting, Ross, like you named off the like the 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 in-state battles and everything. But it's uh, curious. These guys they got from Maryland. I was looking Mm -hmm. here, Mm -hmm. you know, South Carolina starts moving up the coast uh, up north DMV. That's trouble for some other schools. And you look he this guy, uh, the Braden Lee, the the four star cornerback. He took three unofficials to Maryland. He took an unofficial to North Carolina, North Carolina State. He took an unofficial to Ohio State. He went to Pittsburgh twice, went to West Virginia, uh, went to Florida, and he chose South Carolina. That's that's pretty significant, I think, if you're you're able to go up, get into the DMV, and get somebody that apparently was wanted by a lot of the schools that are closer to him. Uh, Shane Beamer's got it going on. Well, they got Nicholas Harbor. The um, uh, just ridiculous athlete from uh, yeah, Washington. Yeah. See, remember we watched him run track. Yes, <laughs> he's six five, two twenty five, and runs the hundred. He wow. looks like Usain Bolt, but yeah, with him towers like, over, buddy. Yeah, incredible athlete. He's from uh, Archbishop Carroll in D.C. 
And then they they got into DeMatha Catholic. They're all over Maryland. And if you think about it, who who made it a lot of money off of DMV players? Shane Beamer's dad. Oh, uh, for yeah, sure. Yeah, for sure. Right. The old Beamer name going back yeah. into Virginia Tech sure. territory. Yeah. Uh, I Tide, don't know if Tidewater master, Shane, uh, Frank yeah. Beamer. Yeah. Now, the Tidewater, he crushed. But he also, you if you're Virginia Tech, you're recruiting – yeah. The DMV. I have not seen a a ton of kids from the Tidewater go to uh, South Carolina yet, but there's another one that if there is that kind of old, you know, family pull, right? It's like Bob. Mm-hmm. It's like uh, Danny Hurley recruiting North Jersey right now uh, in <laughs> basketball, right? Yeah. Like it's just yeah. you're just a gold standard of a name and those long standing relationships. I wonder how much that's playing a role in what he can do. But that is something the Beamer family. Uh, has those those two areas won Virginia Tech an awful lot of games and a lot of good players so that he's he's crushing it from those areas. So I I just it's it's amazing they can flip it on Clemson. Now Clemson again they'll go get some guys. Oh yeah. But you know you look at these top hundred kids from in state. These are O linemen. Like you never want to lose on on O linemen in state. Like any big right. guy. And and they all grew up. I, mean, I know he won last. He won a couple months ago, but they grew up with Clemson dominating. Yep, and all the hoopla on Clemson, and you just wonder what is going on uh, with Clemson. I know I joke and call uh, William Christopher Sweeney young, but young Bayheim uh, with his constant <laughs> complaining. But that is still a uh, is done in in. Uh, with love because in terms yep. of sitting across from a guy who is one of the most uh, charismatic and just kind of pull you in people uh, I've ever met uh, it's Dabo Sweeney. I mean, <laughs> yeah. sit one-on-one yeah. with that guy and you're ready to, I'm ready to sign up, you know, like, mm-hmm. and, and, and then you can go down the slide and play mini golf at his little facility. So it's all <laughs> fun and games. But Beamer, hey. Beamer's, they're beating them head up on some kids, and that's that's pretty that's pretty wild. Yeah, tell you what, just real quick note on two on the verbals that they have that South Carolina has. They have three, six, seven offensive linemen so far. For wow, Jeez. I don't know if they can all play, but they're big, they're long. That's for sure. Jeez. Mm. Yeah, they're getting some getting some guys. They're getting some guys. Dylan Riola, son of Dominic Riola. Great NFL player in Nebraska. He is uh, rumored to be close to his commitment. How about that? Mm. We're down to rumors. <laughs> about rumors possible yeah. non-binding verbal commitments. Crystal ball, getting close to the old crystal ball. <laughs> the the crystal old ball. crystal ball. No, you, I'll give yeah. you a hint on this. You, one of the reasons that the recruiting community is all fired up is because some crystal balls have... Uh, have flipped to uh it's the it's the receiver uh it's um Ryan Wingo who is a receiver in St. Louis who is apparently going to go to school with Dylan mm. and his crystal balls flipped to Georgia mm. uh-huh. which makes everyone think So now that, we we have domino mm, effect crystal dom- balls <laughs> the crystal balls are mm. dominoing Here's the thing. Yeah. Mock it all you want, but these guys are usually right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They're not usually wrong. Okay, call it whatever you want. So, you know, he was originally committed to Ohio State, backed out of that last spring. Uh, it's seemingly been a USC, Nebraska, and Georgia situation. His dad is a legend at Nebraska. His uncle is coaching up there at Nebraska. I think he's made more than one trip pretty high profile, had the entire basketball stadium chanting his name, obviously would be an enormous, enormous recruit for Nebraska. He'd be an enormous recruit for anybody, but I'm pretty sure Georgia will get somebody good. Um, but yeah. when you're Nebraska, you only have a few. USC will get another quarterback. They already got quarterbacks. Thoughts on this, and, and is this a blow to Nebraska, or is it just like, man, the fact we were even in this is kind of – dumb luck anyway but um you know what, what would this mean to nebraska if he actually goes to georgia pap yeah i you have to capitalize when dumb luck presents itself and i think this would be a blow for nebraska if you don't get him with the legacy there 
and you did get him to decommit for some for some reason he decommitted from floor uh, I'm sorry from Ohio State and so you're you're right there in the mix put a lot of you know energy and resources into getting him and as you said these are two other programs that's like eh, they fall out of bed and can find a quarterback uh, Nebraska not so much and I just think it would be a huge cornerstone for Matt Rule to uh, to begin the building uh, to get Dominic Rayola. Yeah, you you not even just had the you know the legacy with the with the program, but hey, you have a new coach who uh, there's a lot of buzz around him, a lot of hype and a lot of excitement, and uh, you you know plain and simple, you just you need you need signees like this to kind of turn around a program um, in a lot of ways. Uh, these, you, you know, big quarterbacks like this, big prospects like this are needed to start to to kind of right the ship and, and turn around the program. You got to win on the recruiting trail, as they say before you went on the field. So this would be, yeah, this would be quite the blow, especially because of what Pat's talking about. You know, these, these programs can go out and get another one. Um, and Nebraska has this connection to this one. And, and so this would be, this would be quite a blow, I would think, and uh, you know, it, Nebraska would have to, I guess, move on to the backup options. Yeah, they let a, a in-state quarterback uh, not, or he, he did not commit, and I, I'm forgetting his name, and I'm not going to bore the uh, YouTube audience with me looking it up. <laughs> um, but uh, I don't know that I, this is an opportunity. I can't call it a a, a real. It is an incredible opportunity for Nebraska that really, I mean, this would have been kaboom, right? Matt Rule, number one recruit in the country, all of that. However, it, it's still just an uphill fight at this point for Nebraska to get the number one player in the country, especially. And it shows how, it just shows how hard it is to get those top guys. Because the, the thing, with, if you're a quarterback, particularly, if you're Dylan Rella and your family knows football, knows the NFL, knows everything. You're sitting there saying, look, I am three years away from being the number one pick in the draft, and I am like seven years away from a half a billion dollar contract or something. Like, I'm seven years from like, forget it. <laughs> um, And so you have, it's so important to go to the right place. Like You have so much to lose. This can't be an emotional decision. It has to be what will get me there? Because there's just so much potential. And that shows how hard is that if there was ever anyone that could trust, it's your uncle's going to be there. NFL coach is going to be there. Right. It's your dad's alma mater. It's not like playing in the Big Ten is some bad thing. But at the end of the day, and I'm guessing this is not too much of an emotional decision. It's if I go to Georgia, uh, I'm going to be surrounded by the best talent, and this is the, the th this is the thing. So, just shows how hard it is to get that guy and make that leap. But I I I, I feel like for Nebraska, it's a it's a frustrating blow. But uh, you know, if if it wasn't for circumstance, they'd never be involved with the number one recruit in the country from Phoenix, Arizona. Now, if this kid lived in Omaha, then that's a that hurts. Yeah. But you know, he does it. Yeah. So I don't know. We'll see. We'll get back on it. I mean, look, we made a big deal about Arch, and now everyone says Arch stinks. So <laughs> yeah. now Arch is a, a third stringer. He's a third stringer. All because right. he that's Arch should have just stayed in high school. He should have just been like Right. I mean he'd be at the Isidore Newman prom this weekend, you know. Yeah, he's doing fine down there in New Orleans. Instead he's getting bashed on the uh on the on the Texas long <laughs> a spring morning. game. A spring game. Yeah, a spring game. Dude's lost his ID around camp. He's he's str he's a freshman. <laughs> struggling. Interesting story out of Illinois State. Hmm. <laughs> this, this one is, is our good. kind of story. Yeah. This is our kind of story. <laughs> Illinois State Athletic Director Kyle Brennan uh, had to resign after questions emerged from WGLT television or radio, I think it's a radio station, investigative radio, I like it, uh, yeah. about uh, elaborate spending on a donor trip to Indianapolis. So here, here's the deal. Okay. <laughs> Brennan gets this guy, Aaron Rossi, 
who uh, company made uh, a uh, <laughs> he had a COVID testing company, and so you know, needless to say, made a fortune uh, when yeah. COVID hit. Coincidentally, I guess he was testing something else before COVID, but whatever. So uh, he is uh, working over Rossi, the booster, to make a big donation to Illinois State. And at the last minute, they decide they want to go to the Big Ten championship game in Indianapolis. And so they, at the last minute, they fly on one of Rossi's planes. And then Brennan, the AD, uh, actually, this is two years ago. It was two years ago's uh, uh, title game, Michigan and Iowa. Brennan buys nine 100 level club game tickets on StubHub the day of the game. Uh, oh, gosh. The tickets uh, cost. It, and it's Michigan's first Big Ten title game? You think the demand wasn't through the roof? Holy yeah. T- uh, nine tickets cost $18,754. <clears throat> He submitted the expense as donor stewardship. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, so they go to the game. I, I, you know, seems like business. They fly yeah. over on Rossi's jet. So get free, you're not paying commercial flights. Rossi um, can't afford uh, to buy his own tickets. He's got a private jet. He's got a jet, but the school <laughs> buys the tickets. I don't know. They take Uber and Lyfts into downtown Indianapolis for the game. Uh, and then there was one other stop after the game, uh, the infamous Red Garter Gentlemen's Club. Uh, <laughs> now, then, if you're familiar with Lucas Oil Stadium, uh, I've heard, I've heard, mm, it's just heard. around the corner. Mm-hmm. I've heard it's just around the corner. Mm, I've heard uh, that too. Of, Close, uh, I've heard close to uh, pod favorite, the Slippery Noodle Inn. Ah, yes, which is, yes, yes, which is just a just a bar, just the oldest bar in Indianapolis. So used to be a know, whorehouse, the Slippery Noodle Inn. <laughs> yeah, there is. Yeah, as probably well. used was, to yeah. be a whorehouse back in the day. Yeah, that's pro. It's been pretty much everything. There's bullets in the wall still. From oh yeah. yeah, great place. Classic it's romantic place. back yeah. then. Now it's not funny. Um. <laughs> Anyway, the old uh, the old red garter uh, seems to have uh, gotten the gotten the boys in some trouble, so they uh, took the lifts back to the. Uh, the lift was to and from the strip club, right? Was it, which is a which is a big uh, uh, big notation in this, right? Is they they he ordered the uh, he ordered the Uber and the Lyft to the strip club. And then ordered the Uber and the Lyft from the strip club. Yeah. Uh, and I was on the phone earlier with with a, a uh, an, an unnamed administrator who said, "We all know you order the Uber and Lyft a block away from the strip club, <laughs> not from the strip club." Come on now, classic. If you're turning in that expense, yeah, let's. let's that think appears about it a little. they did not seem to submit any receipts from the strip club, right? Gentlemen's club, <laughs> gentlemen's club. Let's, yeah. Yeah. let's put some respect on the red garment. That, mm-hmm. that might have been pushing a bad idea a little bit too far if you yeah. turned in receipt. They had eight rooms at the Hampton Inn in Avon. This is such a weird deal. Like, <laughs> this guy's got a private jet, but the, the Hampton Inn? Well, first of all, there ain't no place to stay when Michigan yeah. comes to the Big Ten title game. That's so true. you decided on the spur moment. But here's the other thing. Bloomington, Illinois, I just looked it up, is 170 miles from Indianapolis. That's a two and a half hour drive, maybe three. And you you take a private jet. I mean, the PJ, baby. A little bit. Well, yeah. it's, I mean, this is big. big Come on, Pat, here. in a PJ, get there yeah. in like 35 minutes. Yeah. They should have just yeah. flown home that night, although who knows what was in the in or out of the lift. Yeah. So you can have, really you can have, yeah, that's true. You yeah. can take the PJ. Yeah. You have plenty of time for Mister Red Gardner in his uh, his ladies of the night. I don't know what <laughs> happened. They left the next day at nine a.m. Okay. and uh, flew it. So um, anyway, this is the thing. the The WGLT is was fired up. Now, you know, not coincidentally, uh, Rossi then uh, a couple, a few weeks late, less than two months after the trip. He pledges three million to ISU's new indoor practice facility. Oh, convenient! So, so 
this is good business as I see it. A successful trip, yeah. Successful and I don't investment. really get the whole problem. Um, th- there is problems, of course. Uh, three weeks after that, Rossi was indicted on federal tax fraud charges. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. Yeah, that's a problem. Uh, and his a judge has restricted his ability to spend money. So this guy's kicking around, makes a fortune because COVID hits and goes wild and ends up like pledging to build ISU a new building while in the champagne room. I don't know. That might be what they're alluding to. I don't know what happened. Um, but so we don't know if ISU got the money or not. But now Kyle Brennan has to resign. Uh, you know. People's court. Like, sh- is this? Where's the problem here? What is it? Screw That's- you, WGLT. <laughs> Sticking your nose into our fundraising business. You know that's the fine line. I guess you walk is you. You, you can't just necessarily take money from everyone because there might be some potential strings attached as who's giving the money and what's their background and oh, yeah, he, they have he problems could- with. You could. Come it's on. not his fault. He didn't know he was going to get indicted. <laughs> also, but I, I just uh, I would think the expense report uh, may get flagged uh, for a variety <laughs> of reasons. Number yeah, one, right. he spent eighteen thousand dollars on tickets. Number two, again, he he I I I believe that they were able to find out you know that he went to the strip club because he ordered the Uber Lyft from into the strip club exactly. Mm. Not like smart. a uh, like a dummy. Mm-hmm. Okay, but if you secure a three million dollar donation, I mean, this is Illinois State. I don't think there's a whole bunch of people walking around just throwing three million at you. Mm-hmm. No. Should do well, you really care yeah. if you spent eighteen grand on that? No, I mean that's good a good true. return on investment, frankly. And that's a good you know, return on investment. But may, maybe you could have lifted to somewhere more money, wholesome. But what is Illinois money State? What are they? Like the purity police? What is, what is this? <laughs> if the money is came this? through, it'd be a great, a great, uh, great investment. But I don't, I don't. They're stuck, right? Aren't they stuck? No money, no money coming to. Now they get uh, no money, them. and they're they're fired yeah. their uh, their ad. Oh. No money, fired their ad, and they're out twenty three grand for this trip. Oh. <clears throat> I will say this: general rule of thumb. For the Illinois states of the world, the Missouri Valley Conference kind of uh, schools, if you were talking about you on this podcast, it's not good. <laughs> mm, very true. Very true. <laughs> Unless it's the first round of the NCAA tournament and you've just pulled a 13 over a 4 upset, you don't want to be on this podcast Mm-mm. if you're in Illinois Mm-mm. State. Nope. Illinois State uh, statement. While donor cultivation activities are an integral part of building and maintaining donor relations, they're expected to be fiscally responsible, reasonable and responsible, and to be consistent with the university's missions and values. These practices are continually under review. The university has been made aware the spending for some cultivation activities appear to be inconsistent with the university's missions and values. All they did was take a ride there. (laughs) Yeah, that's all. I this is garbage. <laughs> this Dan is garbage. Free, free Kyle AD. Brennan. Free, free Kyle, Kyle Brennan. Brennan. When Kyle Brennan, I don't know you, but I'm gonna say this. It when you sue for wrongful termination, I I will be a character witness. <laughs> there we go. Uh, uh, How about the guy it. that's like, okay, it's the day of the Michigan Ohio Iowa game going. All right, I got nine tickets here. What is the most ridiculous amount I can ha- possibly throw out here? That's uh, how about two grand, like twenty one hundred a ticket? No one will pay that. No one will pay that. And then here's this desperate dude <laughs> on StubHub <laughs> over in Illinois. Go, I got this shady COVID nineteen testing guy <laughs> wants to watch some football and go to the Red Garter. <laughs> I got to get this done. I'll tell. You, I'll pay it. I'll pay it. But that like nine tickets. Who are all these people? Who's in the Who's in the posse? I don't. I don't believe anyone wants to know. There ain't anybody saying DJ. now. Yeah, they're not. They're not volunteering now to say they were there. Mm-hmm. Pat, I heard. Uh, you know, we talked a couple weeks ago about your grill getting run over. Mm. Yes, in a mm-hmm. in a tragic accident where your your yeah. your 
it's like a ceramic, one of those ceramic grills. Yeah. yeah. And it and it got busted. Uh, has there been a resolution? I'm hearing rumors of, a, of some update. Yeah, mm. we're, we're working towards a resolution. Very, very exciting progress being made here. You know, people was helping it, people. And the pod it, is helping. Okay. I, I owe it to the pod and pod listener Drew Diener in Louisville, who's a local radio host and an enthusiastic pod listener who's contacted me and put me to in touch with his high school classmate, Gunnar Graven at Steepleton Billiards, who sells green eggs. And now, people helping people, I'm closing in on a, gr on a deal for a replacement grill. It's very exciting times. And, Was I uh, tricked into doing a segment that might help you get a free grill or something? <laughs> No, 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 no. I'm it's putting already... you under. You, you, this is <laughs> ISU. You'd be fired. <laughs> no, return on investment. We're going to talk about the values and principles of a core <laughs> beliefs of the pod. Yeah, <laughs> yeah the mission the mission and values. <laughs> I, I believe this is 100% in line with the mission and values. That of is the true. Pod. Anyone That's wants to I send mean. us all grills, we all like yeah, cooking. This is a team we effort. All... Yeah, come on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what happened yeah. to the team? Is your game? This is hey, NIL. This. Uh, this is a wild, wild west right now. One put a quarterback <laughs> over here is getting a new grill, and the receiver <laughs> and the oh. the uh, yeah. linebacker over here. We don't get what's going on with that. <laughs> I think I, I just, think no. I I just like like C.J. Stroud brought over all of his teammates to and paid and grilled for them. I will do that for you all. I oh, will issue oh, you oh, an oh, engraved I, invitation. Oh, okay. I oh, okay. How about are you gonna get a hammer? Yeah, let me yeah, let me fly get, to Louisville. That's <laughs> get right. Get that Rossi guy's private jet. Come on. Oh yeah. Where's Rossi? Uh -huh. Rossi, we need yeah, an yeah. interview. Come on. We'll talk yeah. on the pot. We'll talk on the plane. We'll stop <laughs> Detroit to Louisville. You got to fly right over Indianapolis. I know you like a spot there. <laughs> I know your Make favorite a quick spot. Stop. Quick stop. Quick stop. Mm -hmm. Quick stop. We'll, we'll take the we'll take the Uber to the Slippery Noodle and walk around the corner there. Come on. Not um, um, all right. Well, good luck with that. I I, I thought there'd be you. more to it than just some you sucking up to somebody. No, um, I mean we're working towards we're coming together here. People, if you have people. products that you'd like us to people. to pitch on this show and send us freebies, <laughs> we're um, you know no one's gonna say no. No one's gonna say no. That's right. Especially That's right. Girl. bad boy yeah. mowers. I'm talking to you. <laughs> How many times yeah. have I praised those guys? I haven't seen See, a thing. That's like your mower is like my grill, right? It's one of your closest friends. It is. It you is. Know? I like my grill too. I'm an old, <laughs> yeah. old school Weber. I have an old Weber. I like it. Yeah. The challenge. Hey, yeah, the old Weber gets it done. Gets it done. Not easy though. It's mm -hmm. just the temps can go crazy, but it's all right. Yeah. I got the. I got the. I got the. I, I, for I have the old Weber too. That's what I use. I use the, uh, the the just old like one level circle. Yep. Weber, man, so it's, it's amazing. Yep. I could turn it into a smoke or two. I don't need no green egg, Pat. Get out of here with your green egg. <laughs> I'm not going to say I don't need one. I don't, you know, I mean, let's not be careful what you're saying here, Ross. Don't, don't uh -huh. undersell yourself. <laughs> I mean, I like my car. I don't need, you know, a, a Mercedes, but, you know, I'm not going to say <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. one showed up. Yeah, that'd be, uh, that'd be, uh, that'd be it. We also uh, we also got uh, a enormous feedback on our um, mm. on our uh, a our uh, what is it our, our air train or no train talk train, train talk train. I'm sorry yeah 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 uh, people are behind us on this we're gonna start the movement to get the trains yeah. including I want to give this guy proper credit uh, Dominic is our uh, uh, sent us this story uh, that appeared Tuesday. Uh, mm -hmm. 10 39 p.m so our pod comes See? out monday tuesday night cnn no less than cnn uh comes out with a story about high high speed trains are racing across the world but not in america so clearly the influencer status of this podcast continues yeah absolutely and their their belief they go through how uh, you know absolutely moronic it all is uh china has built twenty six thousand miles of high-speed railways since 2008, and 43,000 more are coming. Wow. The U.S. has 375 miles. Oh. <laughs> Where is Europe, it all in the Northeast? 
Uh, yes, and they still can't real. They can get up to two hundred, but they actually only get up to like one sixty in bursts. <laughs> but uh, the story, so their their belief, nobody cares. There's no. We need to. It's going to be a grassroots movement. The yeah. airline, road construction, and auto industries have choked out Washington. Yeah. So nobody cares about the trains, and they've somehow cast the trains as this uh, needy. You know, it's like a they need, it, you know, it needs to be, it's like socialism or so. It's like it needs to be funded by the government, which I, I know there's many private interstates uh, in this, <laughs> oh, those yeah. airports. Who the hell builds the airports? Um, but it's, it's a very good, it's a very good story. It's very interesting. Uh, but the main problem is nobody even knows about high speed trains because, like, I, I, I generally get to go to Olympics and World Cups and stuff. That's how I learned about them. Like, you're in South Korea and you find out you can. Yeah instead of driving for five hours you can get on a train for an hour 15 and you go, well, that, that doesn't seem humanly possible. And then it's like, no, it, that actually works. They are building supposedly a $10 billion high speed rail between Los Angeles and Las Vegas. Ooh, holy cow. That'll be popular. Mm. Uh, yeah. And this, I oh, think man. we got to get people to see this. And once it gets going in one part of the country, everyone else will really want to get rolling on it. Um, and now it's in like Rancho Cucamonga, which is out kind of in the inland valley, but you will be able to get from there to Vegas in an hour. Wow. Or to drive that road takes you probably four hours. It's like yeah. five. Four. And if you've ever yeah. done it on a Sunday coming back, it's like mm. eight and it's like the yeah. worst drive. Yeah. It's very boring because, you know, and it's the traffic, it's bad and all that. But imagine... Now, uh, you know, but imagine living in that. There's a lot of people living in the Inland Empire, too. You just go down there, yeah. get on a train. An hour later, you're in Vegas. Yeah. And those things can run. It's not just like one train a day. You know, like how sweet would it be? Like you get up at eight in the morning and get on the train and you're in Vegas or let's say yeah. 7 a.m. train. You're in the strip at eight and you're watching college football, betting games all day and then take the train back that night. Exactly. Man, so maybe this is the up. first step. Yeah. Maybe we'll, then we'll get yeah. a train from Vegas to Denver and then yeah. Denver to Seattle and then or at least Seattle the to Portland. Part, the and here we go. You know, like yeah. Dallas to Houston, like Dallas to San yeah. Antonio, like those yeah. ones where there's nothing. And you're like, OK, I can drive three, three and a half hours. Hope there's not road construction or I can get on this plane and all that. Or I can just do this easy train. Yeah. Uh, I, I just, I, this is, this is, this just seems again, once you've done it, you're, you just are stunned that our country can't do it. Right. Did they, right. they ever do right. the one from Orlando to Miami when there's supposed I to think be that one? one died. Yeah, uh, there was supposed mm, to be one. Mm -hmm. They were trying San Francisco to LA, you know, it's just everything yeah. in America. And then, you know, it's like, there's some rare salamanders living in the way. Or something. <laughs> They're doing one. Uh, you know what? Uh, uh they're doing one from Baton Rouge to New Orleans, uh, or they were supposed to do one from Baton Rouge to New Orleans. There was a big talk about it. I, I don't know what the update is on that, but that would be a good one. Of course, that's not a very long drive. That's like an hour and 15 minutes or so, but but yeah. I'm, I'm guessing that would turn into like, you know, 25 minutes. 20 minutes. On the, uh, yeah, on like the 20 yeah. minutes. Yeah. And so they actually said the way to do it is the short bursts, and they're actually mm -hmm. doing one in, in inland California, like Bakersfield to Merced. Hmm. And uh, it's only 171 miles, so that's like almost a three-hour drive, depending on traffic. The speed of the train can reach 220, and so you'll be there. Oh, in, 220, you know, wow! Yeah, that's, so you'd be there unless you know whatever the heck that's going to be. Um, yeah. And yeah, you could do all these things. Now, you know, I, I I'm going to see it when I believe it. I don't think our country can right. pull this off, but they yeah. literally say nobody cares about any of this stuff. Uh, like they just passed some gazillion trillion bill and, uh, you know, it was only like 10% of it was for railroads and most of them are like fix the one. So chemicals don't tip over and yeah. blow up our cities and stuff, right. um, which I think would be the priority for me before, uh, you know, a bunch of drunks get from Vegas to perhaps. LA quick, but yeah. uh, maybe not update on, uh, the old New Orleans to Baton Rouge train, which, uh, would be wonderful for like you know LSU game days. You know a lot of people stay in oh, New Orleans. Talk about phenomenal. wonderful to go get the train back and forth. Uh, it's moving. This is a November story from WWNO. 
uh, down there in uh, in New Orleans. Uh, the long-awaited passenger rail is moving forward from New Orleans to Baton Rouge. There's just one holdup, and that hold holdup is. Uh, <laughs> That the tracks between Baton Rouge and New Orleans, surprise, surprise, are not safe and are too rickety for any passenger rail. So first they have to fix the uh, the tracks and the preliminary estimate price tag on fixing the tracks, specifically those around the Bonnie Carey Spillway. If you've ever, you know, driven between New Orleans and Baton Rouge, you've you drove across the Bonnie Carey Spillway and the rail bridge next to the Bonnie Carey, uh, like the interstate, is a disaster. I mean, it looks like something that just can collapse upon itself. But the price tag to fix it, $300 million. So uh, something mm. tells me this won't be happening anytime soon. Mm. Yeah, they're flush with cash in Louisiana. So. Sure. Yes, they are, aren't they? I yeah. I, I would I would guess that every single rail line and bridge in Louisiana is rickety. Yeah, <laughs> that would describe the whole state in general, especially yeah, the southern never, part. Never the whole southern there. part of the state is yeah. rickety. <laughs> Boy, this this looks like a sturdy building. No, nothing. <laughs> no, no, nothing about Louisiana is anything. Potholes, collapsing buildings, battle rats—they got it all except the the strong infrastructure. Yeah. Uh, somebody sent us a movie, a, a, a yes, Baltimore a rat, rat movie. Have we watched <laughs> oh, yet? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I haven't. I got to watch. Yeah. The NHL playoffs are, are, are getting into my time, but how long is this rat movie? I don't, I, again, I, yeah, well, I, I got an email to me, but I'm afraid I didn't watch it. Um, I need to, but yeah, Baltimore basically, Baltimore wants their proper respect as an absolute rat hotbed. <laughs> so they do not want to be <laughs> discounted. Baltimore standing up and be counted. Yeah. Hold on now with your rat talk. <laughs> Somebody, uh, we we during this rat debate uh, of ours last podcast, I think I revealed where I live in D.C., uh, uh -oh. the neighborhood in which I live, because of the council member who the, or the person running for council had the had the uh, had the rat he head on the campaign. Uh, sign said yeah, something yeah, like, I'll yeah. get rid of the rats if you vote for me. Uh, so it kind of revealed which uh, precinct in DC I, in which I live. And and uh, I had uh, somebody uh, DM me and uh, was uh, was saying that, you know, offered to buy me a drink at the local pub, you know, so that's nice. <laughs> uh, might there take him go. up on it. But he did chime in about the, <laughs> about the rat issue in DC in that uh, crazy. Uh, crazy person who had the massive rat head on the campaign sign which oh. yeah really was something uh, 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 i'm looking now i'm reading the reviews of the rat movie this is a rat film a feature-length documentary that uses the rat as well as the humans that love them live with them and kill them oh. to explore the history of baltimore good god there's there's never been a rat problem in baltimore it's always been a people problem Mm. Oh God! <laughs> Tree hugging. <laughs> the rats. rats were here first. It's one of the most extraordinary visionary inspirations in the recent cinema. One of the most compelling food for thought nonfiction movies of the past few years. Remarkable, brilliantly defies categorization. I don't want to. I don't want to watch a movie that respects the rat. I'm sorry. <laughs> you guys watch The Wire. The rat gets you murdered. Your rat <laughs> in Baltimore. East Baltimore, West Baltimore, Avon Barksdale is going to take you down. <laughs> Marlo Stanfield killed all sorts of people just for suspicion of being a rat. <laughs> I did have somebody else. The, the rat, this rat discussion um, really did uh, bring <laughs> out bring out folks in the there. in the uh, in the woodwork. I know you never know where the college the, the, the pod. Nobody wants go. to talk about uh, football. It's just no. It's they just <laughs> want to talk about the rat. But somebody did call me and said, "Yeah." There are a lot of rats in D.C. Most of them are on Capitol Hill. Ah, uh, yeah. Very good. Yeah. Ah, ha, ha, ha. Very good. Very good. See, that's why we can't get a train. <laughs> I have to uh, say, too, that the, the rat film uh, tipster uh, lives in Israel. So kudos to him for his global globalization, global view, and also kudos to the podcast for having a listener in Israel. We appreciate our international uh, listeners. 
We get we the do. soldiers sometimes too. That's always good. I yeah, find yeah. the Israel one would be even funnier though, because someone would be like, "What are you listening to?" And it's like, "Well, I can't even describe <laughs> this. How do you can't even describe college football, right? Uh, right? Let alone all the other stuff." <laughs> um. Yeah. Well, all right. Good day. Uh, we, we needed someone from Munich to buy me beer. If you get a drink, this is the thing. Ross is getting a drink out of this. Yeah. Pat's getting yeah. this grill. Yeah. What am I getting? Yeah. What am I getting? Mm. Hopefully Rossi You're, flies up in his jet. If you, the, the feds haven't yeah. seized it and come talk to me. Uh, you're uh yeah, you need, you know what? You need to be nicer to people, man. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. Maybe next time. All right. Uh, I think we've exhausted the topics. Exhausted, so. exhausted the rats and trains. Yes, we're done. But the potential future topic, I just got an email about Taco Bell's innovation kitchen. So keep that one on. Mm. Wow. On really? Yep. I just saw a, uh, a, someone, uh, someone got a, uh, Taco Bell gift card the other day. Mm. 25 bucks at Taco Bell. I was like, wow, that's a, that's a good gift card. How about that? I'd, I'd use that. Yeah. Remember we said that the who is it that had the line that you go to Taco Bell and that the, the, you don't know what you're going to order the the, uh, the menu speaks to you. Yeah. Jay Arnold. <laughs> Jay Arnold. Yes. Yes. <laughs> it's the only Amen. fast food place you don't know what you're going to order till you get there. <laughs> right. <laughs> Crunch wrap supreme. I just feeling it. You go to McDonald's, you know what you're going to get. Yep. Not the Taco Bell. It is. It's a symphony of uh, something. All right. We'll be back next week. More spring games, more who knows what. Keep subscribing. Yep. Leave us some nice reviews. Uh, someone left a crappy review because I can't pronounce anyone's name. No kidding. You don't have to review that. <laughs> we acknowledge <laughs> that. All right. It's the whole That's point. An, it's an acknowledged feature of the show. Pronunciations could be better. No, no, okay. You want good pronunciations? Go listen to another podcast. <laughs> Talk to you guys later. Ha, ha, ha.